What does the field of psychology have to say about sex, gender, sexual orientation, and gender roles, and what are the known differences between the sexes? To start off, how does the meaning of gender differ from the meaning of sex? In psychology, the term sex refers to the biologically influenced characteristics by which people define males and females. If the 23rd pair of chromosomes contains a Y chromosome, a gene on that Y chromosome causes the gonads to release the male hormone testosterone around the seventh week of conception. The additional testosterone in males stimulates the growth of the male sex organs in the fetus and the development of the male sex characteristics during puberty. In psychology, gender is the term used to describe the socially influenced characteristics by which people define men and women. Our gender is the product of the interplay among our biological dispositions, our developmental experiences, and our environment or culture. So gender refers to the psychological aspects of being male or female. What behaviors are expected um, of you based on your sex? Are you expected to be nurturing because you're a female? Are you expected to be handy around the house because you're a male? Now, your biology does not absolutely dictate gender, but it can influence it in two ways, through chromosomes and through hormones. Typically, most people are born of either the male sex or the female sex, but on rare occasions, an infant is born with sexual organs that are ambiguous, and they are called intersexed or intersexual. Intersex is a modern term for a uh, hermaphrodite, a person who possesses ambiguous sexual organs, making it difficult to determine actual sex from a visual inspection at birth. There are different ways that a person can be born intersexed, but one way is called XX intersexed. The person has the chromosomes of a woman, the ovaries of a woman, but external genitalia that appears male. This most often is the result of a female fetus having been exposed to excess male hormones before birth. The labia, or the lips or folds of skin of the external female genitals fuse, and the clitoris enlarges to appear like a penis. In most cases, this person has a normal uterus and fallopian tubes. But as I mentioned, gender is also socially influenced, so pay attention to misuses of the term. Um, a new trend is for expectant couples to host a gender reveal party to announce to friends and family whether they're having a boy or a girl. While typically one's gender matches their biological sex, this isn't always true. So really, they are re revealing the sex of the baby because that is all that is known before birth. Of course, I totally understand why they may not want to invite their friends to a sex party or ask grandma to join them for their sex reveal brunch, but as students of psychology, try to use the terms appropriately. So what exactly is gender identity? Gender identity is a person's sense of being male or female. Again, typically this matches the person's sex, but the development of your gender identity is influenced by both biological and environmental or social factors. For example, Western cultures put a lot of pressure on a boy to have masculine behaviors. If he cries or acts shy, he could be labeled a sissy. Girls are expected to be quieter, less aggressive, and less competitive than boys. Let's watch the following ad and think about gender roles in our culture. Hi, Erin. Hi. Okay, so I'm gonna just give you some actions to do. I get to see the first thing that comes to mind. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Oh my God. Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> now throw like a girl. Aw. My name is Dakota and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. So do you think you just insulted your sister? No. I mean, yeah, insulted girls, but not my sister. 
Is like a girl a good thing? Actually, I don't know what it really, if it's a bad thing or a good thing. It sounds like a bad thing. It sounds like you're trying to humiliate someone. So when they're in that vulnerable time, between 10 and 12, how do you think it affects them when somebody uses like a girl as an insult? I think it definitely drops their self-confidence and um, really puts them down because during that time, they're already trying to figure themselves out. And when somebody says, you hit like a girl, it's like, well, what does that mean? Because they think they're a strong person. It's kind of like telling them that they're weak and they're not as good as them. And what advice do you have to young girls who are told they run like a girl, kick like a girl, hit like a girl, swing like a girl? Keep doing it, because it's working. If somebody else says that running like a girl, or kicking like a girl, or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring, and you're still getting to the ball on time, and you're still being first, you're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean. Yes, I kick like a girl, and I swim like a girl, and I walk like a girl, and I wake up in the morning like a girl, because I am a girl. And that's not something that I should be ashamed of. So I'm going to do it anyway. That's what they should do. If I asked you to, to run like a girl now, would you do it differently? I would run like myself. Would you like a chance to redo it? Why can't run like a girl also mean win the race? What did you think? Isn't it revealing that when you ask the little girls to run like a girl, they run as fast as they can. And they only run like the stereotype when they're older, after they've learned essentially that like a girl is an insult. Like a girl means you have to do it worse than not like a girl, or essentially like a boy. So gender roles are our culture's, culture's expectations for male and female behavior and personality. Social learning theorists believe that children learn their gender roles through imitation of others and reinforcement of correct gender behavior. The good news is that gender roles shift over time in history. A century ago, American women could not vote in a national election, serve in the military, or divorce a husband without cause. As recently as the 1970s, an assault that occurred against a woman by her husband that would have been deemed serious enough to warrant a felony arrest in any other context was automatically reduced to a misdemeanor if the assault occurred in the context of a marital relationship. Thankfully, that's no longer the case. When it comes to gender, hormones and chromosomes are biological influences on gender identity. If you remember, around the seventh week of conception, the developing fetus with a Y chromosome will instruct the gonads to start secreting testosterone, which influences the development of the male sex organs. But sex horm hormones affect the developing brain later on. Between the fourth and fifth months, sex hormones in utero support either female or male wiring in the brain. Females often have a larger hippocampus than men, and men and women differ in terms of their hemispheric divisions of labor of some tasks. In other words, there is some evidence that exposure to male and female hormones during fetal development could affect gender identity later on. We know that there are some differences between the function and structures of the male and female brain, and some of these sex differences in the brain appear to be prenatally influenced by the male and female chromosomes. For example, there are differences between the utilization of gray matter versus white matter between men and women when engaged in activities. More research is necessary, but a person may have the sex organs of one sex, but the brain of the other they may be transgendered. Some celebrity or high-profile cases you may be familiar with are Caitlyn Jenner, formerly Bruce Jenner, who was married to Kris Jenner, who is the mother of Kim Kardashian. Chaz Bono, the son of Sonny and Cher, was formerly Chastity Bono. I Am Jazz is a television series documenting the life of a transgendered teenage girl. An interesting case is the case of David Reimer, a Canadian who was born in 1965 as a healthy boy. 
David was not transgendered or intersexed. He was an XY male, born with male genitalia, but during his circumcision, soon after birth, his penis was inadvertently destroyed, and he was subsequently raised as a girl. Psychologist John Mooney oversaw the case and reported the reassignment as successful as evidence that gender identity is primarily learned. This case was particularly interesting as David had an identical twin brother. Much controversy followed, including David's admission that he never identified himself as a female. Eventually, as an adult, he went back to living as a man, his biological sex, and married. Sadly, he suffered from depression and committed suicide in 2004. If you're interested in further details, extensive information about this case is available online, as well as in a book by John Colapinto called As Nature Made Him. More recent studies agree that many infants who were reassigned a sex at birth for various reasons do not accept the assignment as adults, suggesting a biological contribution to gender identity. It's not easy being transgendered due to the lack of social acceptance, so some who are gender nonconformists may suffer from depression or experience extreme distress known as gender dysphoria. So what have we learned? We've learned that sex and gender have different meanings, and we've learned that sex hormones influence prenatal and adolescent sexual development, that the development of sex organs happens earlier than the masculinization of the brain, and we've learned how, in rare instances, people can be born intersexed or even transgendered. On that note, I'll see you next time.